Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight. Blessings and grace. Let me adjust this a little bit. Blessings tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy 2022. This is actually my first broadcast of the year. Yes. We took a rest in January, but we've been on assignment. I hope that you've been following my 28 days of empowerment, inspiration, and hope. I hope that you have been following those and it has been blessing you. Blessings and welcome to each of you who are joining me tonight. It is an amazing day. It has been an amazing day. Today is, well, in case you didn't know it, today is my birthday. It's been splattered all across <laughs> The internet, these internet streets, I've been so blessed by your words, by your wisdom, by your gifts, and by just your love. I am been, have been so, so, so blessed. Welcome tonight to the broadcast. I'm glad that you were here. Glad that you are joining me. I'll just, I just wanted to come on just actually for a few moments, just to one, say happy new year, to say, God bless you. I pray that you and your family are doing well and that you are navigating through life and navigating through victoriously. Amen. So welcome tonight into the Speaking Hope and Life broadcast. I welcome you on all three of my platforms. Uh, I welcome you on Facebook. I welcome you on my YouTube live channel. Also welcome you on Twitter. So welcome tonight into this virtual space, this virtual time of sharing, this virtual time of just loving and me pouring out. So I welcome you. Just going to be on it for a few, um, for a little while because um, um, won't be extended tonight, but we will start um, a series tonight. We're definitely going to start a series tonight. As we uh, closed out 2021, we were in a series dealing with and speaking concerning the heart because the heart absolutely matters. It is the very center and the focus of your, it is the central uh, organ of your being, the natural beating heart. You can't function without a heart. Right. So that organ is vital to your life It's vital to the success of your life, vital to your ability to live. And so we begin to talk about that soulish area when we look at the from the understanding from the biblical uh, basis, as well as in the New Testament, as well as in the old. When you see that word heart, it is synonymous with the word soul. And so we are three part being. We are spirit. We have a soul and we dwell within this fleshly body. And when there are areas that are impacting us and oftentimes it impacts our our soul those soulish areas and the soul is the root of of who we are is is the controlling center of an individual and so if those soul areas are not surrendered it can absolutely uh, lead you astray. If those soul areas are not surrendered, they could uh, distort your senses. If those soul areas are not surrendered, it can absolutely definitely derail your purpose and your destiny. And so we ministered from those areas for about five weeks. It was different areas, different topics, but it was all helping us to understand the importance of surrendering those areas to the king. So welcome tonight to the Speaking Hope and Life broadcast, year 2022. Yes, we are still on the air. Yes, we are still um, speaking hope. Yes, we are still speaking life. Yes, we are. We here at the Speaking Hope and Life broadcast, we speak life to dead places. Amen. We speak life to those dead places because oftentimes there are some things in our lives that may be dead and some things need to remain dead, right? But some things God wants to resurrect. He wants to breathe life in. He wants to pour life into those places. Places. So we speak life to those dead places so that they can spring forth and thrive. We speak life to those dormant places so that they can be activated and begin to bring forth when something is dormant. 
That means it's been arrested in its development. It's not growing. It's not active. And so therefore it is, um, therefore it is something that God needs to, he needs to um, breathe on that space, breathe on that place. Listen, we've got some people trolling us right now. And what we are going to do, we are getting ready to block you. Listen, we pray tonight that the Lord uh, deliver you and set you free. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So tonight, yes, welcome, welcome. So what we were saying, we were saying we speaking, we speak life to dead places. We speak life to dormant places and we speak life to broken places so that they can be healed and restored. So welcome tonight into this space, into this time of sharing. I welcome you tonight. I am Nedra. And if this is your first time, if this is your first time joining the broadcast, please let me know. You know what? I cannot see your comments. I'm trying to see your comments. I cannot see see your comments, but I'm going to try to go on to another space so I can see them. Welcome, welcome into the space tonight. Can't see your comments yet, but I am um, getting ready to uh, pull, see if I can pull them up. Hey there. Okay, I see you now. I'm having to look at my phone because it's not showing on my StreamYard app. Blessings to you, Mama Platt. Blessings to you, Cindy. Oh, woman of God, need a blessings to you, sweetheart. Hey there, Elder Grace. Dina. Hi, Dina. Hey, Chantel. Blessings to all of you. Had to look at my phone because um, something's going on with StreamYard, but yay, it's all right. It's all right. So blessings to each of you. I welcome you. If this is your first time, your first time ever joining the broadcast, I want to welcome you in the speaking hope and lifestyle. I want to uh, welcome you tonight to this up to this space. This is a safe space. This is a space of healing. This is a place of transformation. This is a space where the spirit of the Lord will minister right to you, right where you are. Blessings to you, Pastor Raleigh. Hello, my dear friend, Rosemary. Blessings to you. You are newly wedding. I remember Chantel, do you remember Pastor Riley? We ministered at Dr. Janine Howard's, um, her women's conference, and there was a space there for men to minister. And this man of God, he ministered and proposed. When I tell you, this man of God, Pastor Riley Thornton, that's on, he proposed to his, uh, uh, his now bride. I was like, oh my Lord, that was absolutely beautiful, saying to her and everything. And then the word of the Lord was spoken over their lives. So I pray that you all are doing well and standing in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We thank God that that word was declared over you. Blessings to you tonight. So welcome tonight into this space. If this is your first time joining me, please let me know saying it's my first time. You can put a one in the chat. And if it is your first time, let me know what city, what state, what country you are joining me from tonight. I welcome you into this time. Hey, my son. Hello, Trey. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, blessing. It's Raleigh's first time. Trey, I don't know if this is your first time. I don't think it is your first time, but I welcome each of you into the broadcast. Listen, I understand that when you stand up, when you show up, when you show up, um, the Lord shows up with you, right? He will show up with you. So tonight we believe that he's going to speak hope to you. We believe tonight that he's going to speak a word of wisdom to you. We believe tonight that he's going to speak a word of grace to you. We believe tonight that the word of the Lord is going to penetrate you right where you are. We declare it. Listen, I declare it tonight. We activate the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. We activate the Holy Ghost. He dwells on the inside of us. And listen, we stand um, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we thank God that he flows through us and we submit ourselves unto him. Yes, we submit ourselves unto him so that he can speak freely through us. So welcome into this space tonight. Thank you all so much for your birthday greetings, for your birthday blessings. When I tell you it has been such an overwhelming day, it meaning not from a bad standpoint, but it has been overwhelming with the love and the pour out of love and the words that have... 
when I tell you it has ministered life to me, it has ministered to my spirit. It is ministered to my heart. They have ministered to my mind. And I am so blessed by all of your kind words. I couldn't keep up with the posts, with the texts, with the, the inboxes, with the messages. I was trying to. Um, and I'm going to go back and look back and make sure that um, with the best of my ability, I can respond to each of you. But I want to tell each of you a big God bless you and thank you so much for celebrating me and for honoring me to today. Listen, I am walking in God's double grace. Yes, God's double grace. I, listen, is, is that such a thing? Hey, is that such a thing? I believe it is. Come on, somebody. I believe it is. I believe it is. Oh, put you said put the cash up. <laughs> well, it's actually up on the screen, sissy. It's on the bottom part of my um of the screen. Let me see if I could put it in in here. Uh, a L B twenty eight. So, so there, I just posted it. I think, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, my, my CC said to put that up. So I'm going to put that up. It was up on my, um, my template, but blessing. I thank you so much. I thank you. Um, did I pin it? I don't know if I can pin it in this part. Um, I don't know if I can put it in this part. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of your love. Listen, I was tearing up all day long and my heart has been so blessed. Your words of love have truly blessed me. Your posts, your, your shout outs, your sharing me in your stories and posting pictures of when and how God spoke to you through me. I remember uh, some of the things I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't even remember that. And I want to tell you the blessing of the Lord. One of the things that I understand as, as listen, as a servant, of God. Blessings to you, mom, mama Gaines. Blessing to you. I hope I pronounce your name right. Ken Sherrill. That's Trey's mom. Blessings to you tonight. Um, I want, as I was just reading and sharing and thinking about um, some of the, the, the memories that individuals were um, just putting on, you know, their timelines about when they had met me and some of the things, whatever, how God used me to, to speak life to them or hope or wisdom or whatever it was. And some of those things you don't remember because as we, as we endeavoring, listen, my endeavor is to leave this earth empty. That means everything that the Lord, um, whatever he gives me, I want to have the ability to be able to pour that out, whether it's from a standpoint of preaching, whether it's from a standpoint of speaking. Um, if that's in a corporate setting where I'm hosting a teaching session, where I'm mentoring women, where I'm coaching women, where I'm loving on women. Come on, somebody where I am um, uh, writing. Yes, where I am writing and authoring books and all of those wonderful things. One of the things that I understand is that um, in all of those avenues, God can be glorified. Somebody say amen. All of those avenues, God can be. Thank you so much, beautiful angel. Blessings to you, beautiful anointed songbird. Thank you so much. All of those avenues, God can be glorified. And so me as a vessel, a vessel of honor, I endeavor to leave this earth empty. I remember Dr. Miles Monroe. Blessings to you, Joyce. That's one of my mentees, my, my coaching um. Uh, partners, blessing to you, blessings to you. And so I, I realized that, listen, I've got some more things to do. Come on. I've got some more things to do. I've got some more ground to cover. I've got some more countries to my feet to step foot in. Come on, somebody. Got, I've got some more countries for my feet to step in. And I've been so blessed. I received calls from Kenya. I received greetings from um, Ghana. I was like, oh my Lord, God, you, you have blessed me. When you begin to think about the scope and the depth of how God has allowed and favored me to even touch individuals' lives for his glory. That is the overwhelming blessing for me. Blessings to you, Carmela. Blessings to you, woman of God. Looking so amazingly beautiful. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my phone because this little StreamYard link is not showing me the comments. 
blessings to you, woman of God. And so my my life, my my life is um being poured out, and I'm so blessed for that. Because many, many individuals may not um have the opportunity to do um certain things, but I'm so glad that God has favored and blessed me to be able to touch women in different continents. We are about to, to gear back up for our second year of the Ravens Hope um, mentoring program. I have five phenomenal women who partnered with me as I pulled, put together this program and built the program from scratch. And we pulled together this program and went through a couple of training sessions with the mentors. So we were all on the same page. We launched it um, um, in 2020, and we had a year of mentoring women in Cambodia. There were 20, I think it was 28 women, um, all together in all of the three groups that we met with them on a monthly basis. It was bi-weekly poured into them, loved on them. And listen, they graduated, several of them finished the program. They graduated, um, April, I'm sorry, August of 2021. That is a blessing. See, we didn't have we weren't able physically to travel to Cambodia as I have the four uh, years previously to be in their presence. But this program uh, helped them to there was three areas that we focused on. One of the areas was discovering their discovering and walking in their purpose. One area was inner healing and wholeness. And the other area was focused on business. Some of the women wanted to know about business. These are leaders in their own ministries, in their um, own organization. Some of them may have some businesses there in Cambodia. And we've had the opportunity to pour into them to help share, to help impart. We left a piece of our heart in them. And that's the blessing of the Lord. That is the absolute blessing. And so we are gearing back up um, at, at the latter part of April for the second year of the program, making some, um, just kind of making some uh, changes and adjustments so that it is um, moving even more smoothly. Uh, we're going to have a booklet where the ladies can follow along with. And so I am excited about that. Let me tell you something. That is the power of influence. Somebody say influence. Hello, Jerry. Blessings to you. Hello, Minister Jan. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining tonight. We're going to talk. We are. I'm going to I am going to talk a little bit about what freedom is, but I'm also right now just kind of flowing. My heart is just so full with all the birthday blessings. But want you to understand that influence is an absolute force, but it's not forceful. Come on, somebody. When you have the ability to shape one's character, when you have the ability to impact an individual's development, when you have the in when you have the ability um, to uh, to uh, to help someone move from one point to another, and it's not only an individual. Think about your own places of influence. Think about the place where you may even be in your business. If you're an entrepreneur, if you are working on, if you have a job, if you're if you're working in your career, think about how you are impacting your organization. Have you, if you're whether you're a team lead, if you're a manager, if you're a super advisor. There are people looking to you. They're looking to you for guidance. They're looking to you and you can impact them. That doesn't mean that you have to go and knock them down and say, listen, this is what you're going to do. But what do you do? You show up. You show up ready. You show up in excellence. Come on. You show up on time. You show up doing the job that they paid you to do. My Lord, what? Come on, somebody. And in, in the day and age that we live in now, there's many of us that have the ability to work from home. So even in that case, I'm sure that there are meetings that you're either on Teams, that you're on Google Meet, or you're on Zoom, or some other platform where you're meeting or leading, or you're in that space, and you may have the opportunity to speak up. Listen, that's the time to impart, of course, based upon whatever the content of the meeting is. But it's a time for you to be innovative, to you know bring some things to the table, to to help shape, to help um, shape the organization or path or an initiative in the organization. This is how you influence. Come on. This is how you do it. You show up in excellence. Now, this was nowhere on my paper. Honey, it's just flowing from what's on the inside of me. So I'm just going to let it flow. Because what I do believe is that there's somebody who's listening tonight, somebody who's listening that may be in that space and wondering, God, how do I show up? How do I show up? You show up ready. 
You show up in excellence. You show up on your assignment. What is your assignment? Are you doing the due diligence? Are you studying? Are you uh, putting in the time to understand the natures, the ins and outs of whatever it is that you're responsible for? Come on. And you show up in your excellence. Because let me tell you this, when you show up in your excellence, it allows others to see what you're working with. Oh my goodness. It allows others to see what you're working with. Listen, that word show up. When you look it up in the dictionary, I didn't even realize that it had a actual meaning. Look it up in the dictionary. It means to be become conspicuous. It means to be to 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 step on the scene, to become um to so that others can be aware. Now, are you coming waving flags and saying, "Look at me"? No, 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 no. But what you do is you influence by you showing up in your excellence. What is your excellence? What is your life been graced? How have you been graced to stand? Some individuals have the ability to mentor. Some in individuals have the ability to you know impart. And when you're mentoring an individual, it's an individual that has an area of excellence, right? And they're helping a younger um, individual or someone who may be new to that to that lane or say for instance if it's a teacher and this you've been teaching for 35 years and you're having the ability to pour and help and to train other teachers by the wisdom by the wisdom that you possess because you've walked it you've learned it you've lived it right and so you can impart that to them like you could say listen this is how I did this this is what worked but this did not work you can absolutely do that and so those are the ways honey some of those ways that you can show show up. God, listen, it does not always have to be a scripture and a, um, and then listen, I love the word and we'll teach the word and we'll preach the word. But I want you to know that there is, there are areas that God will call you to and you, then you might not necessarily be quoting the scripture. You'll show up in your excellence in science. You'll show up in your excellence in math. You'll show up in your excellence in, um, you know, in electricity. You'll show up in your excellence as an engineer. Come on, show up in that excellence and allow God to use you in that space. Now, I don't know how we got all the way over there on influence, but it's all right. It's all right tonight. It's all right. It is absolutely okay. So, um, yes, yes, show up in your excellence. Yes, that's right, um, Joy. Show up ready. Absolutely. <laughs> Shante, show on what you're working with. Absolutely be uniquely you. Don't be, don't try to be anybody else. Be who who God created you to be. If you've been following my 28 days, I started on February 1st. I wanted to do something different for my birth month. Today is my birthday and I thank you for all of your birthday greetings. And so what I started is I wanted to, um, I just, cause me, you know, I'm all about empowerment. I'm all about that inspiration and, and hope and putting those words out and speaking those words of wisdom and life and hope. Because I realized that in any area that God has called me to show up in, when I show up as a preacher, when I show up as a speaker, whether it's in the corporate arena, arena, or if I'm, you know, speaking to, um, you know, some women, or if I'm mentoring, or if I'm coaching, or if I'm, you know, writing a book or creating content, I realize that God has called me to, yes, speak hope and life, yes, to those dead places, those dormant places, come on, somebody, and those broken places. He has definitely anointed me to do that, but He's also, He's also given me the ability to inspire hope. Come on, somebody, to ignite that passion on the inside of an individual. And, and by doing that, I'm helping them to rewrite their future. Not only are they being inspired, but they're being inspired and it's provoking them to action. Not only are they just like, oh my goodness, the, their creativity is being activated. Okay, it's coming from that dormant place. Yes, that place that's been arrested in development. Whatever it was that caused it to be arrested, whatever it was that caused it to cease, God gives me the ability to speak light to that thing and cause that baby to leap again on the inside of them. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, and that dead place, the thing that's been dead warmed over twice. 
Come on, that thing. Then God allows me to speak life to that place that needs water, that needs some watering, that needs um uh, to be begin to thrive again. And then those broken places where we've been wounded, where we've been hurt. God allows me to speak the healing oil. There is a balm in Gilead. There is an oil of healing. There is an oil of restoration. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that He works through me in that manner so as they are being inspired and then they're being provoked to action they have ability to be able to see a little more clearer right when you are ignited when something is ignited on the inside of you it's literally almost as if there is a fire burning and you're having to do something with what it is that's churning on the inside of you you have to get that book out right joyce you have to uh host those those events, those prayer events Chantel. yes the lord is burning on the inside of you with the coal of prayer called you to teach it called you to help and cultivate and to nurture those places and to nurture those areas. I saw my friend, um, Nadina on here, where she just not too long ago hosted something about, I think, being uniquely you or discovering your unique place, who you are. Listen, God, when he anointed you, when he called you, when he birthed you into the earth, there is an innate gift on the inside of you that only you are meant to release in the earth. He does not have duplicates. Come on, somebody. There is no need for a duplicate. I believe one of the 28 days, I think I spoke, I think it was, um, what day was it? Lord, was it yesterday? I believe we talked about counterfeit or being a, a, a genuine, being authentic. That's it. When you are authentic, that means that you're of undisputed origin. There is no question about who you are. I don't have to think. I don't have to search. I don't have to wonder, but I will know who you are because you are authentic. You're not trying to be a, a, misrepre a misrepresentation or a fraudulent um, a, a actor or someone taking on another first, you know, another person's facade or they're uh, trying to act like Susie or trying to act like Joe. Listen, when you're saying that you're, when you wanting to act like someone else or you're thinking that you're not good enough or you're thinking that you're not great enough, listen, are you saying that God didn't create you in excellence? Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's somewhere along the line that we need to, whatever that thing was that calls us to think that we are not capable, that calls us to think that we're not able, that calls us to think that we cannot arrive in the place where God intended, we need to uproot that thing and then take on the knowledge and the wisdom of God and understand who you are. Right? Understand who you are. And so listen, God wants us to be authentic. So I started out February um, um, just posting some imp empowerment, inspiration, and hope. And some of the I've gotten some inboxes and uh, some shares and some individuals have said that it has blessed them. It has encouraged them. One of my aunties up north, she said, this thing spoke to my soul. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When God gives you an inkling or an idea, you better step into that thing. Who am I talking to tonight? Who is it that something has been gnawing, something has been churning in your heart, something has been burning in your spirit, and you're thinking, no, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm capable. I don't know how. I want to speak to you tonight. I want you to be unleashed tonight. I want you to walk. We're going to talk about freedom in a few minutes. Lord, if I get there, God, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but I need to speak to that individual tonight that is watching and who, and you may even watch the replay. I need to speak to you tonight. When you got that idea, and that's something that you're dreaming about it. It's something that you cannot shake. I need for you to step into that thing. I need for you to release it. I need for you to launch it. Yes, let me tell you something. You know why? Because there's somebody that's in the earth that that is intended for. Hear me. There's somebody in the earth that it's intended for. It's intended for somebody to receive it. It's intended for somebody to be made whole by it. It's intended for somebody for it to be life for them. It's intended for them. Now you troll tonight. You you putting up this thing in here from uh from YouTube. I'm gonna tell you tonight. Don't strip off your clothes. But I want you to do is be delivered and be made whole. Come on. 
you're not deterring me. I pray tonight that you be delivered. I pray tonight that you be set free. I pray tonight that the yoke of bondage be broke off your mind and off your life. I pray tonight that every weapon that has been assigned to your life, that has caused you to act and function in whatever way, listen, you putting all this nasty stuff up here in this chat, I want you to know tonight that Jesus loves you. I want you to know tonight that he died for your sins. I want you to know tonight that there is a reckoning. Come on. There is a reckoning. And tonight, I declare that you are loose from every foul activity. We declare all the way back to your mothers and your fathers, your grandfathers. We declare tonight the healing of the Holy Ghost. We say tonight be delivered. We don't play games. No, ma'am. And no, sir. Thank you. We, we don't play games. Talking about strip off your clothes naked, put your butt. Listen, listen. We declare tonight that the air, these airways are sanctified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be unto our God. And so anyway, you individual, you the individual that God has been giving you some ideas and giving you some thoughts, they are not for you to hold. Yes, get them all, get them together, get them lined up. But I declare to you tonight that you need to release that thing. You need to release that pamphlet. You need to release that book. You need to complete that song. Come on, somebody. Come on, you need to get your business plan together. Yes, you need to write out um, some things that whatever it is God is calling you to launch, if it's a course, if it's a session, if it's a chat, if it's a coffee, come on, you need to do that. Because you know why, if God is placing it upon your heart, that means somebody in the earth needs it. Do you know that you were placed here in this earth with innate gifts, with innate abilities, with things that the earth needed from you to release? Come on, somebody. The earth needs you to release your excellence. The earth needs you to release your wisdom. The earth needs you to release your giftedness. Yes, you're gifted for a reason. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Now take that as your confirmation because you're like, Lord, I just need a word from the Lord. God just confirm this word to me. Well, it's been confirmed. How about that? It's been confirmed. How about that? And don't stop when it gets hard. Don't stop when it gets tough. Come on, somebody. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. Amen. Keep going. Listen, that's what it's about. Putting my hands in your back. Speaking life to you when you think that you're not capable. Speaking hope to, to let you know, yes, you can do it. And yes, you will do it. Amen. Amen. Blessings, blessings, blessings to all of you who are joining me tonight. I thank you so much. Listen, I don't talked about so much that wasn't on a note, but it's all good. I hope it has been blessing you. Is it blessing you tonight? I pray tonight that it has been a confirmation that you've received a confirmation just in these few minutes that we have been on tonight. I thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you are pouring out. Yes, you are. Hello, Beatrice. Blessings to you. Oh, hey, sweetie, Kawambi. Thank you. Blessings to you. Oh, listen, I want you all to, I want you all to, um, to, um, as you are aligning up those projects and aligning up those things that, um, um, some of you may be holding on to and you, uh, got, I see people got, you even got some papers like, Lord, I don't know if, if, if this is what you're saying. God said, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Go ahead and release it. He said, release it because what you don't realize, there's someone somewhere, and it may not even be in the Northern Hemisphere, it may not even be in North America, that needs what you possess. Hallelujah. They need what you possess. My God. My God. Let me, let me share this testimony with you. I've been um, on this platform uh, streaming uh, probably it's been over a year, celebrated uh, uh, yeah, a year last year. And um, I would come on Tuesday evenings and minister and minister the word of truth. And I ended up getting an invitation from a lady in Ghana. Now, I've been to Ghana, 
But this lady had nothing to do with that missions trip. I didn't even know her, didn't meet her, didn't know anything about her. And she reached out to me last year. I think it was in April. She reached out to me. She messaged me and said, I would love to have you minister on my platform. She was running um, it was almost like a women's. Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact title, but I know it was all women that were ministering. And she was from Ghana. And so, of course, I, I didn't know her. And I just kind of went on her page to check her out. And I saw some. I was like, oh, my goodness, my, my friend, Prophet Nicole, who is sharing her birthday with me today. Happy birthday, sis. Blessings to you. Um, And when, you know, we corresponded and she wanted me to speak on her platform in Ghana, she has an organization there and it was, um, uh, you know, something going on and she wanted me to minister. And so I ended up asking her, you know. I was like, how did how, how did you even know about me? Because I did not know her. I did not know her. And she said to me, she said, I've been watching you. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday blessings. She said, I've been watching you since January. Now, she reached out to me in April and she said, I have been praying and um, seeking the Lord concerning you ministering, you know, for this this set time that she had. And I was like, wow. OK, so, you know, I prayed and I was like, Father, OK, because it was um, a preaching, uh, you know, platform. And I was like, OK, and I, I felt led to do it. And so I ministered for her and she was like, oh, my goodness, this was so powerful. I'm going to have to have you come back. And that's what she told me. I said, well, how did you find how did how do you know me? How, how did you find out about me? And she said, I've been watching you since January. Now, this was April, the latter part of April. And the event was coming up like in early May. So let, I, I'm saying all that to say this. If you don't show up, your voice can't be heard. I, I want that just to marinate. Now, I'm not telling you to start a broadcast. That is not what I'm saying. I want you to hear that if you don't show up, if you don't show up in your excellence, if you don't show up in the anointing that's upon your life, if you don't show up in the area of gifting, come on, you can be gifted to my Lord. You can have all the gifts and abilities and talents and all of these things. But if you don't show up in them, no one will know. They're, they're no one going to know how excellent you can speak. No one's going to know how beautiful you can sing. No one's going to know how strategic your mind works. No one's going to know how well you can write grants. No one's going to know how well you can put letters together. No one's going to know your administrative excellence. Nobody is going to know if you don't stand up in that thing, stand up in that excellence. No one's going to know. And one of the words that I've, I, I'm, I don't have a theme for the year, but actually I, I, I guess I do now because I've been saying that term double grace because I've turned 55. And so turned 55 today and I was, I've been speaking, I said, Father, I thank you for double grace. But one of the words that keeps resurfacing, that keeps resurfacing um, as I'm reading stuff, as people are talking to me, as I'm you know, going through some things, I keep seeing this word amplify. I keep seeing this word amplify. And when something is amplified, it's made louder. It's made bigger. Right. And so I keep seeing this and I said, Lord, I believe that there's that you are you're endeavoring to amplify my voice. I listen, hear the word of the Lord. When I tell you, I keep seeing this word. I keep hearing this word amplify. Now, if you don't stand up and step in your yes, it's magnified. Absolutely, Chantel. If you don't step in and stand up and show up in your excellence, there's no way. There's no way that um, that excellence can be seen. Right. And so I said that as in sharing about the um, the lady um janice is her name in ghana and then there was another young lady uh, another woman ministry i ministered for her a couple of times who was in nigeria but she's now in finland and had the opportunity to minister for her a couple of times was actually supposed to go to finland in october but because of the their heavy restrictions there she just held it on a virtual platform now let me tell you something i'm from brooklyn new york born and raised. I've been living here. 
I had been living here for uh, 30 something years, 30, about 35 years. And you couldn't have told me that this young woman from Brooklyn, New York, that God would use her in the capacity that he is. I want you to remove remove whatever that is on your eyes. And I want you to be able to see your worth, to see your value, because if you can't see it, you're not going to stand up in it. And I want you, I, I, you couldn't have told me that I would have traveled to Cambodia four years in a row, loving on the woman, um, loving on the women in uh, the Ravens Hope organization. I love them. Oh my goodness. There is a love. My heart is knit to theirs. Their hearts are knit to mine. And the impact that he's allowed me to touch these women across the nation in different continents is blowing my mind blowing my mind, but I understand he's a great big God. And I want you to understand it's the same great big God. And he wants you to show up in your excellence because he wants to amplify your voice. Oh, I'm so glad it's blessing you, Simone. Yes, honey. Come on and stand up. Let it be amplified. Listen, my sister is on here tonight and God, she is a part of a global organization empowering women and oh my goodness, all over the world. And I am so proud of her. So, so very proud of her. And they lean on her heavily because she is just gifted in so many areas. She's gifted with content. She's gifted with graphics. She's gifted with, you know, pulling people together. She has a passion for youth and reaching them. And so she has a, um, she, you know, hosts different events with this or world women world i think it's world conference awards i think that's what it is um I, forgive me sissy if i'm saying it wrong but listen you couldn't have told us that these these two these two women from brooklyn that god would allow he would listen amplify amplify our voices and having the ability to connect with people in, in all these different countries and be able to touch their lives. Listen, who knows where God is going to take you? But if you don't show up in that excellence, ma'am, you're going to be sitting right where you are wishing you would have and could have. Come on, somebody. Wishing that you would have and you could have. Now, there's some of us that I believe that he's called to actually go across the water. Now, I didn't know that that was a call on my life until I kept showing up. I just kept showing up and, and, and just kept showing up. And then the door opened for me um, six years ago. And I have been blessed to be able to travel um, in, okay, World Women Conference and Awards. Thank you. Um, have been blessed to be able to travel and am scheduled to go back now that they lifted the restriction, the, the 14 day um, quarantine in Cambodia and um, at the end of May. And so I'm like, oh my Lord, it, it is amazing to me. And so it is a blessing. We'll get to launch the program and I'll get to see them in person and get to love on them and get to do some amazing things or serving their community and serving them as well and lifting and enlarging the kingdom. That's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's about. That's what it's about. Amen. Blessings to you, woman of God. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. Well, I did say that we were going to talk about freedom, right? Did, did I didn't say that. I'm so glad that each of you are here. So, so blessed to have you on. We're going to start a series. And I'm just going to give you just a little tidbit about what freedom is, because the last several weeks of um, the latter part of last year, we were in a series. We were in a series um, talking about matters of the heart matters of the heart. And so we did a five part series. You can find it on my YouTube channel. It was a blessing. There were many people that are on here tonight that were blessed by that series. And um, the first one that it really does matter, the, the, the matter of your heart, it absolutely really does matter. And then we talked about what's your soul, your heart condition. Then week three was uncovered and free. In order to be free, you're going to have to uncover some things. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to uncover that thing, that uncomfortable thing. You're going to have to dig. Come on, somebody, and walk in your freedom. Then we talked about week four, shutting the door, because a door it denotes access. Come on. Some things we give too much access, and so we therefore need to shut the door. And the last week was freedom is intentional. 
when we look at um, the Galatians 5 and 1, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where God has made you free and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Even as I'm saying that scripture and you think about it, it is intentional. And so we wanted to talk about, since we were talking about that heart and those soul matters. And listen, we understood that an unsurrendered soul will lead us astray. An unsurrendered soul will cloud our vision. An unsurrendered soul will cause us to act a way that is, of course, opposite to the word of God. An unsurrendered soul will hinder us and derail us from our purpose, derail us from our destiny. I know that some of you out there, you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being in the same place that you've been in, possibly or in this one area, and that it seems like you're struggling and tumbling back and forth. I want you to know tonight that there is freedom. Freedom has been bought for you. The freedom was bought on the cry on the cross by Jesus. And so therefore it is available to you. So we talked about that space of the heart and surrendering that those soul areas unto the father and those areas must be surrendered. He's not going to knock you down and say, surrender it. He's not going to knock you over or put his, put your arm behind your back. You must recognize and understand that freedom is readily available. It is for you. He, he, he died on the cross for your freedom and you, you, the believer, must stand and walk in it. Hallelujah. Freedom is Christ's work of the cross. He sealed it there for you. So we must walk in it. So tonight, I wanted to just leave you just with a little tidbit of what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks about what freedom is. That's going to be the title of our series, Freedom is. Amen. Freedom is. I want you to start putting in the chat what freedom has been or is for you. Put it in the chat, say freedom is, and then say what it is, right? So tonight, um, just as we know, we understand when something is free, that means it's not under the control or the power of anything or anyone. And freedom is the power and the right to act, to speak, and to think without hindrance or restraint. Hallelujah. Without hindrance or restraint. And so we're going to be talking about, yes, oh, yes, Chantel, freedom is peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our foundational scripture will come from Galatians 5 um, and 1, where it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, just even reading this scripture, this this the Galatians were um, there was a faction of individuals that were teaching about the uh, the cert being circumcised, and they were lording that over the freedom of. Christ and the freedom in Christ. They were wanting people to come back into the bondage of the law. And so therefore Galatians is an epistle that is um, um, helping them to understand. Paul was Paul wrote Galatians and he was like, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who uh, did you forget what I taught you? So there are some times that we need to take another look. Come on, somebody say, take another look. We need to take another look. We need to um, go back and examine that thing again and understand. Paul wanted them to know, no, you are not going back into bondage. Jesus Christ, he completed the work. Therefore, listen, he didn't throw away the Old Testament, but we understood the 613 commandments. Could not be kept. Somebody said they couldn't be kept, which is why they needed a better way. They needed another way because the Lord was saying, he said, listen, my people are honoring me with their, my people are honoring me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So they was doing it as a mode of, you know, a, a rope mode of doing something, but their hearts wasn't in it. And 613 commandments were too hard to keep. So we needed a savior. Somebody say, I needed a savior. We needed a savior. So he completed, he came and completed the work of the cross so that we will no longer be in bondage to having to keep 613 commandments. Lord, that's too many to remember. If I can't remember them, how can I keep them? So he understood that. And so what here in this, in this book of Galatians, this is what Paul is telling and teaching them. And he's telling them, listen, 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 you stand in liberty. 
Don't be, don't be bound again in the yoke of bondage. And the bondage was the law. And the bondage was the law that what the teaching that was going forth. And he was trying to help realign them with the message of Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the freedom. He bought the freedom. And so we're going to use that scripture. Um, because as we read it, we say, listen. Stand fast in your liberty. That means that there are times that something may come up and try to bump up against you that may cause you to think or to act in a way that you are not free. Right? When you stand fast, that means you're standing firm. You're persevering. The meaning of that word means to persevere and to persist. Right. It's not just only standing in the heat in the in the um, Greek, which is the New Testament. When you look up that word stand fast, it means to persevere. It means to persist. And that's what we have to do when it comes to our liberty. He wanted them to lay. He said, listen, no, 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 no. Don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Don't be entangled back under the yoke of the law. But you have been freed from the law by the death of Christ. And I want you to know tonight that freedom is Living as you should and not as you please. That's what freedom is. Living as you should and not as you please. Because although freedom means that you're free from restraint, that you're free from a, a hindrance, that you're free, you know, you without restraint and you have that ability. But I want you to know that all in that liberty, in that freedom freedom, there is still a responsibility. You are responsible to live as you should and not as you want, meaning that you're not free to do any and everything, but although you are, does that make sense? You've been given the freedom of the word. You've been freedom to function and flow as a, as a, a son or a daughter in the body of Christ. But it does not give you freedom just to go and float around talking about, oh, I'm free. So that means I can go and be in a relationship with whomever I want to, even though I'm married. No, ma'am, and no, sir. That's not that type of freedom, honey. Free, this freedom is living as you should and not as you will. Come on, somebody. It says, don't be entangled again. Don't be ensnared by the yoke of bondage. Because true liberty, this liberty, this true liberty is living, um, living to omit any and everything, the things that do not um, correlate and or line up to salvation, that does not line up with the word of truth. So you're in your freedom. You are still omitting things. You are still understanding that, yes, you are free, but the free, the freedom is not a, a, a sin, a, a, a cloak to sin or the freedom to sin. And I believe we can find that in uh, Galatians 5 and uh, 13. It says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Amen. Yes. So tonight, that's our word for tonight. Freedom is understanding that you should live as you should and not as you please. Live as you should and not as you please. So we will be sharing just some um, some nuggets as it relates to what freedom is. What is freedom? Hallelujah. That is freedom. It's not the freedom to be uh, to run and frolic. No, but even with that freedom, there's a weight and responsibility that comes with it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, whew, I believe that's all I have tonight. And I am so blessed that each of you have joined me. Thank you so much. And thank each of you who have celebrated and joined me for my birthday. Um, my sissy told me to put my cash up up there in case anyone wanted to bless me. Listen, it's up there on the screen. I've pinned it. I hope you can see it. And listen, if the Lord leads you to bless me 
thank you. If not, I still love you and I'm going to still show up and I'm going to still impart. I'm going to still bring all of myself um, to, to these times of sharing and loving on you. I want to thank each of you for joining me tonight. Blessings and grace to you. I have to still put out day eight <laughs> of our empowerment. I was so busy today sharing um, on and on uh, just um, and being blessed with a uh, birthday lunch and all of that great stuff. Uh, beautiful flowers. And I got some more flowers today and cash apps and cards. I, my, my heart is so overwhelmed. And I thank all of you for sharing your love and your words of wisdom with me. Thank you for journeying with me as we speak hope and life. Uh, listen, share the broadcast because I do believe that it will be a blessing to others. Amen. I do believe that. And keep um and keep um checking in whether you on uh, um, in touch with me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook because that's where I have been sharing on all three of those platforms. Um, twenty eight days of empowerment inspiration and hope. I'm already going to, once these 20 day, days are over, I'm going to put them in a book form. And I believe that it's going to bless people, not just here in this space, but people, whoever will have the, whoever will purchase a book. And, and that's how um, that's how I know um, that God gives us the ability to impact. He gives us the ability to influence because I have been receiving such blessed messages. And some people say, Lord, I, I can't wait to see what the next day is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and so it's been blessing people. So listen, so it, I'm so great. There was a God idea. I was like, I'm going to do something different, Lord. And so 28 days of inspiration, um, empower, empowerment, inspiration, and hope. So share those as well. Um, thank you so much for even joining me today tonight and for joining me on all of those platforms where you can see the inspiration, the hope. Um, and tonight, today's word is day eight. And we're going to talk about whole, W-H-O-L-E. We're going to, I'm going to share that um, before my head hits the pillow tonight. So thank you so much for loving on me and celebrating me today and blessings to each of you. Listen, share the broadcast. Yes, sissy. Yes, yes. It's going to be um, 28 days of empowerment, inspiration and hope. Um, I'll probably add some other stuff in there, too. But I was like, you know what this is? And it's, God has just given it to me. And I started typing down just like some words. And I was like, OK, thank you, Lord. He's and he gives me just the content of what to say. And that's how God works. He is he is the master creator. And if he dwells on the inside of me, surely he's the one helping me to be able to create this content to help empower, to help lift, to help bless, to help inspire, to help ignite and to help rewrite your futures. So blessings to each of you. Love you. Thank you so much for joining me and have an amazing rest of your evening and the rest of your week. Love you. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.